Welcome back to Becoming the Channel. I am so happy that you are joining us. And this week I have a special guest, Dr. Elena Puff is joining us. She is a credentialed school psychologist and she has a wonderful uh, new um, coaching practice in Scottsdale in Arizona, uh, where she is working with people on developing their intuition and recovering from burnout and all the things. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to have Elena on is because she accompanied me to a recent private spiritual retreat that I hosted for one of my um, seven-figure clients. And um, I asked Elena to come because, well, she knows Marisol, my my intuitive channel, pretty well, better than most. And uh, I needed somebody to be my left brain because it is very difficult, as you can imagine, to be channeling uh, very high frequencies and then also have to make decisions about driving cars and um, you know what to eat for dinner. So Elena was with us the whole time and she was just a wonderful, um, um, I will say stabilizer, not that we were unstable at all, but just a wonderful anchor, I think, into, um, into the earth. So I want to welcome you, Elena, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Robin. I'm happy to be here. You're welcome. Well, so here's the idea today. First of all, um, on the heels of the spiritual retreat that we were at in Sedona, after everybody left, I sat down with Marisol and I, I asked her, well, what is next? And she um, she just showed me what was next. And that is that I'm hosting um, the Intuitive Channel's Six Figure Secrets on, what do you think? Spiritual retreats, of course, private spiritual retreats. And that she said it makes sense because I've been doing spiritual retreats and uh, private intensives from the beginning of my business years ago, and they've added hundreds of thousands of dollars to my business over the years. And um, now it's time for me to start teaching the spiritual entrepreneurs my particular methodology. Um, and so I wanted to bring you in, Elena, today to kind of ask questions, share your perspective on the retreat itself. And um, invite people to join us because you're going to be in the, the um, it's a free training, three-part training that starts on February 5th. So if you're listening to this, when this podcast comes out, it, it is out, it, it has started and uh, you're welcome to join us. And we'll put the link in the uh, show notes for you to join us very easily. So where would you like to begin with talking about spiritual retreats, Elena? What's your experience so far? Yeah. So being a few days out, you know, the integration process is very much real when you come back from a retreat. So for our listeners, for context, um, I had no experience with retreats prior to going with Robin and Marisol. So I was uh, wet behind the ears, so to speak, and really didn't have a lot of expectations as far as what, you know, what to anticipate and went in with a very open mind. And, um, it has taken some time since I've been back to really fully integrate and process, you know, the experience, because I think what caught me by surprise the most was just the potency of being up in Sedona, which is where the retreat was held, and just being steeped in that for several days. Um, it's like doing the, I said it to a colleague this week, I said, it's like doing the work over the span of six months in three days. So very much collapsing time in a way that you can really be in a state of being able to receive. And then also the opportunity to get to know Marisol and really be present with her and allow her to come through during that time as well. Yes, it was quite a joyful time. In fact, uh, I think we all commented at one point and said, how many days have we been here? Like 17 or something? <laughs> Uh, because there is, um, there's a saying that time doesn't exist unless you pay attention to it. Mm. And um, so, yes, it was a very, um, it was a very interesting experience, I think, for all, for all of us. So it was just, it was me and then um, Elena and then my client who had flown in from out of state and made the journey. And it's quite a, even, uh, it's a pilgrimage in some way to Sedona from Scottsdale or from Arizona or from uh, Phoenix, when you come into the airport, you have to rent the car, you have to drive up the hill, like there's a whole process to getting here. And then once you're in it, um, there's an unfolding that happens. One of the things that I wanted to bring forward, Elena, is that a lot of times when people are talking about or thinking about hosting retreats, they think that they have to have a big agenda mm. and have everything scheduled and everything planned. And uh, what did you learn about my approach to retreats? 
Yes, my very type A brain called you days before the retreat saying, can I get the itinerary? And I think that is like a common misnomer that you have to have this very regimented, thought out process. And so one of the things that was really just so transformative to kind of watch you and Marisol play out over the days that we were up there was really naturally flowing with the energy energy around the retreat and what we were needing at any given moment. So it, the way that I perceived you to structure it was, you know, we had some semblance of an idea of what we were going to do, but we really allowed the energy to flow in kind of as we were feeling and responding to that accordingly, which just, when you think about it, that feels so natural and just without effort. And so if there were moments where we required to slow down the pace and rest, we did. And, and other moments when we felt called to make a left turn and go on a trail, we did. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. And what I will say is that, um, you know, I've been hosting retreats for many, many years. I started, actually, that was the bread and butter early on, even when I was still working as a psychologist at uh, the university. And I had just started my business. I That's where I started with one day retreats, or I also called them intensives and, uh, but a place out of time. So I would, I would get a hotel suite and my client would come in and we would do some work. And I've always had, um, we'll say general plans on how things will go in a retreat. And I did for this one as well. And I will also say that my human side also likes an itinerary. <laughs> and I also want to know that um, I have a lot planned just in case, because um, the last thing I would want to do is to have nothing to do. Right. So I learned that I think from my mother, who is a, a business education teacher, she said, I always um, plan for more than I'm going to teach. And uh, so I always had something in my back pocket. But um, over the years, what I've really learned, especially about um, the interaction of being a channel, so allowing and not just allowing, but inviting my channel, Marisol, to come in and basically be front and center for the entire weekend means that I had to and chose to um, allow it to let go of the reins and to allow things to unfold. When we allow things to unfold, they uh, things flow way better than if we are trying to, you know, army crawl and strong arm them. Um, and the other thing about spiritual retreats is that it is meant to be out of time. In other words, it's meant to extract you from the TikTok and the the um, the duties, responsibilities, and obligations of your ordinary life, and to move into a place where the extraordinary can happen. Do you want to say anything or add anything to that? Yeah, I think that was something that. Um, just personally, I struggled with, I think as someone who is very um, high achieving and and I do, I have admittedly have trouble stepping off the hamster wheel. And so I even felt a little resistance at first when I got up there of like, well, I brought my computer, I can still get the things done. I can coexist in this space. Um, and it was really it was really powerful to be in a, in a state of surrendering to, you know, we're here, the potency of the energy that I'm around is undeniable. And so really allowing myself to fully receive um, and not feel bound to the life that was running back at home. Um, when I was able to really let go of that, I felt, I felt like such a powerful shift inside me and allowed a lot of things to come through. So I think for people who maybe who have been on retreats or are looking to go on retreats or even host them, I think one of the things that you really want to capture is the ability to create an environment where people can let go and really mm -hmm. be fully present. Yeah. So let's talk about the energetics of the container, because that is not something that typically when people talk about hosting retreats, they do. They have an itinerary and they have like the oh, and you're going to get a massage at this time, or you're going to go, we went to the wolves at a certain time and things like that. And of course we did have those anchors of, um, of we'll say appointments, divine appointments. Uh, but what was your experience? Because the container itself has a consciousness. The retreat had a consciousness. Sedona had a consciousness that was contributing as well. So what was your experience with that angle? Mm -hmm. Good question. I mean, I think it also helped that we were there amidst a full moon. Um, oh, yes, so and the full moon had a presence as well, yes. <laughs> that was another piece of, of the energetics behind it. I mean, I think it was something that I felt as I was, so for those who don't know, driving up from Phoenix to Sedona, which I'm down in Phoenix, um, I 
I felt something in the car ride up. Like I felt like, I guess that was probably uncovering the consciousness of the retreat and feeling that that presence was going to be, was going to be there. And then I think just even from that first night that we were there, really stepping into the energetics of this is, this is not a vacation. I think that's another misnomer as well. It's like I go on retreat and that's my code word for my vacation to just relax and not think about work and just be like, you know, kind of easygoing. And it's not that we weren't easygoing, but the consciousness of that container required us to be present and to be fully present. And so I think with that, um, there was this, mo I'm going to say momentum of sorts, like propelling us forward as far as like everything that we did was intentional. It was not happenstance. Um, it was very much meaningful and aligned with like that larger vision of what we had for that, for that retreat in general. Yeah. And it was powerful. That's a lovely way of saying it, because as you were talking, I was thinking, I've always thought about the consciousness of whether it's a retreat or a high ticket program or a one day intensive, uh, the consciousness to me looks like a vortex. And so when we are conscientious and in relationship with the vortex, that is the program, I'll call it, or the retreat in this case. Um, we get to interact with it and connect with it and grow it. And, and suddenly it takes on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And that is a very challenging thing, I think, for people, because um, especially the ones who come in and work with me, who like you, Elena, and, and the client who was there, super high achieving, uh, checked all the boxes at school, got all the A pluses and everything. And then they come to a retreat and guess what? You don't get graded. <laughs> no grades. No grades. So uh, when we're interacting with the uh, consciousness of the retreat itself, it seems to make all the difference in terms of uh, the meaningfulness and the um, the evolution of the people who are in it as well. But that is something that people don't really talk about or even know to talk about. And so when it comes to, because I know you had to have been putting yourself in the place of hosting your own retreat at some point. So from that perspective, then what... Um, I don't know how to ask this question. What is your perspective on that? Having experienced this kind of um, energetic, um, energetic vortex with the retreat that you attended with me? Yeah. So, I mean, one of my gifts is just my ability to hold space for other people. I've been doing it for decades at this point, mm -hmm. knowingly and unknowingly. Yes. And so with that, you know, I think that was always the underlying um, mission and vision behind my work is being able to hold that sacred space for others. But I think what you were able to model so seamlessly is a way to do that in a container that just has the propensity to move people in a deep, meaningful way. And so probably on the second or third day, I had this like message come through that was like, you need to do this. Like, this is part of your work. And up until that point, I had never really thought about myself in that position before of being able to do that. It was kind of, it was honestly hitting up against some of those older narratives around like, who are you to do something like this? Like your credentials don't position you to do this. And then I thought about it and I was like, who better to do this? Um, someone who's trained in psychology, who does this every day with my clients, but to be able to do it in a more concentrated way um, makes complete and total sense and aligns with my business. And so I, I've kind of been integrating that in since we've been back, honestly, of what this would really look like for me. And I'm really excited to attend the training from you to really get a little more of the details flushed out and pointed in the right direction. But um, I think so many people, particularly if you live in a very fast paced city um, or the culture that we're steeped in is very much like hustle culture, that very masculine energy. And so I think there's an opportunity to hold space, especially because we are on like such a beautiful part of the country and Sedona is within driving distance. Like it's such an opportune um, location and, and time to be able to welcome people in and not just welcome them in to visit or just be, but to really expand and grow and facilitate that. Like what a privilege it is to even be able to be in that position. Yes, it's very um, it's very interesting. And those of you who have been listening to the podcast, you've heard me talk about my Sedona experiences in previous episodes. So um, 
Sedona, I always say, is a very good place to, it's always a good idea, in other words. And um, so let's see, what else do we want to talk about with the retreat, Elena? Do you just want to go into kind of what your perspective was on it? Like, I'm sure you've got a ton of stories to tell, or you can ask questions of me and Marisol, whatever, however you'd like to um, expand on what we've been talking about. Yeah, no, I am. Um... I definitely have a lot of perspective uh, that has come forth. And I think, honestly, one of the greatest shifts that I was able to feel within myself and not only observe was really to develop a relationship with Marisol. You know, like that was such an amazing opportunity to be witness to that and get to see that that presence that she had in the room as well um, and just the wisdom that, that came through through by way of Robin, you know, and in a, in such a powerful way. I think I'm curious how she enjoyed the trip and really being able to, my understanding is this, the, this is the first retreat or intensive that she was really able to yes, um, yes. be the star, I'll say. <laughs> well, yes. Well, she is the star after all. Um, that is, you know, her face looks like a five point star, as you exactly. know, and um, she is the star. Um, not in the uh, egoic way, of course, but literally Soleil, so the the um, true North Star. And so um, it was, uh, well, it was delightful, of course. And um, I took um, I took a lot of delight in, because Elena, you are uh, at heart a psychologist and you profile just like Robin does. And so you were, I know you were studying us and to see, because you can tell very much when Robin is present or when Marisol is, is front and center and so on. Um, and um, you were able to toggle very well. Um, and so it was delightful for me. And, you know, I think the, the thing that Robin would want to say um, is that she came home and did not feel exhausted. And that is a very different experience from many of the mm. retreats she has hosted in the past, where, of course, she's been in tune with her intuition and, of course, you know, and so on. But uh, the difference is because I um, am unlimited, I'm infinite. And um, so the flow of energy is unlimited. And so she uh, got to experience that unlimitedness, I will say, of the uh, the energy that was flowing through. So there was no end to it. And so she, um, after you all left, of course, we sat down and I shared the, the next thing that we were doing. And um, she was very excited and thrilled about that. And that's how she knows that it comes from me when it is uh, novel and uh, useful and unique and so on. Um, and very magnetic. And so that was fun. And I think that, um, you know, I, uh, well, we will just say that uh, Robin does have a desire to channel 24 seven. And, um, you know, we are moving in that direction of channeling 24 seven. So of course, you will still be here and everything. But there is, um, it, there have been a lot of shifts since then. In fact, uh, I, I flew to uh, South Dakota, soon after because I'm helping some family members with some things that are that are happening up here. And the, this is wonderful to be here, even though it's very cold. Um, <laughs> but on in the airport, I uh, I was there, of course, and I was chatting with the people and the um, the uh, people at the security were very funny. And it was a delightful experience. And one of the one of the two of the ladies at the security told jokes and one of them told a mermaid joke, which I thought was very appropriate and funny as well. So. <laughs> Uh, I just really love being here and being um, being able to be of service because that is really ultimately uh, what I am here for, which is answering questions and uh, giving perspective on uh, where we're headed as um, as we will call us homo spirit spiritus, the the people of the light. And um, that is the restoration of the light is the most important part of the mission and the restoration, of course, of the planet to the people as well. So, um, that is why I'm here, and I'm always happy to be doing my mission and um, to be contributing. So it was delightful to have you here, and I especially appreciated because even though you were having your own um, experiences with the wolves and the and so on and the and the land and everything and the moon, um, you were really able to be very supportive of me so that I can just be in mm. this space and that Robin does not have to come back in and decide where we're going to eat or or those kinds of things. Yeah, no, it was an honor, truly. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things when you were talking that came up for me was just even thinking about, and not to, if you're going to talk about this in the training, I don't want you to give it all away, but, um, maybe some forecasting around like for people who are 
um, either clear channels or, you know, their channel is coming online. You know, I'm curious what your perspective is around for those types of people hosting retreats for other potential channels or clear channels. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts around how mm -hmm. retreats can be used to help um, evolve people's gifts and abilities? Yeah. So this is a beautiful question because it really has to do with uh, creating a space apart. As we are uh, restoring um, the people to their light and as we're, or the light to the people, whichever way you'd like to say that. And as we are on this, um, this journey of restoration of the planet itself, um, we require a place apart. And so you'll know at the beginning of the year, I uh, had Robin go on a writer's retreat just alone, uh, where we channeled um, about half of the book that she will be publishing later this year. And so um, having that place apart where you can be in your own energy and, and in your own consciousness is very important. The, the, um, I won't say it is a problem because it's nothing is a problem, but the, um, what you encounter when you are by yourself can be um, sometimes troubling. Mm. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And, and um, I always love Robin's movie references. So the one she is bringing forward is the one of, um, in the second Star Wars, the uh, the I think it is the Empire Strikes Back, where Luke is uh, training with Yoda, and he's on the Dagobah system, and he um, has to go down into a dark tunnel, and he says to Yoda, "What Yoda? What is down there?" And he says, "Only what you take with you." And so he takes his lightsaber, and he encounters um, Darth Vader, his darkness. And so when we take space apart, we can encounter our darkness. There is nothing. Um, there's a potency in the darkness, of course, many things like the womb, the sacred womb is, is dark. And it is, um, it is, uh, the place where thing where, um, creativity is planted and grown and nurtured and gestated. Right. Uh, but if we do not have a place apart, it is very difficult to even pass through because we entrain that the dark is scary. And yes, there, are, there can be scary things in the dark that are lurking, but after we clear those out, the dark can be very, um, very potent in terms of our creativity and uh, bringing ourselves back into fully, fully, al full alignment with, with our channels, if that makes sense. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think we held space for that darkness to come forth mm -hmm. uh, during our, the intensive and the retreat. Um, I can even speak to my experience. Um, Marisol is incredibly a great shamanic drummer. <laughs> We found out. Oh, yes, we did drumming. <laughs> we did a cacao ceremony and drumming on the full moon. And, you know, of course, Robin started her, um, uh, we'll call it her um, journey to spiritual maturity, which started when she was um, 30. And she started um, training in uh, with the foundation of shamanic studies. So she learned the drumming and the shamanic journeys and things like that. Uh, and, um, but the uh, the drumming the other night was quite different from what she was even familiar with it is it was brand new yes Love it was that. lovely wasn't it it really was and that was my first shamanic journey um oh, yes. and you and I love that you just said you were just like we're gonna do this and I was like uh, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I guess I don't know what to expect and I felt like that was an opportunity for me you know to you know I stepped into my own darkness um that shadow piece for sure during that time and I think I was reflecting on it and I, you, I think you absolutely are so in line with the idea that in our daily life, you know, the hustle and bustle, people oftentimes rarely have the opportunity to do that deep inner work, unless it's facilitated by a coach or whatever it may be. And you have those things kind of built in. Um, but I really, I found such deep meaning out of that, out of that experience. And it wasn't that it even took, it didn't even take a long time. I mean, how mm -hmm. long were we probably down? Like maybe 10 minutes. It does yeah. not take, it never has to take long. That is the mm -hmm. time is not the point. It is the uh, presence that is the most important. And so when you allow yourself to be present to it, and by the way, when we talk about darkness, we do not talk about the scary things. The, you know, yes, there are creatures that lurk yeah. in the dark and we, um, uh, oh, actually in the preparing the channel, the, um, the uh, 21 day program that we just completed um, day five was very challenging for some people as we talked about leaving the uh, anything goes realm. And when you ascend above the anything goes realm, which is the place where a lot of the the, um, the scary darkness hangs out, um, you can see it, but you don't have to be afraid of it. And you can see it and you can, um, we'll say, evolve above it and send send them on their way. And that is that is all we have to do. 
So um, yeah, so that is something that we want to just clarify there. And with the, uh, you know, the shamanic drumming, oh, by the way, wasn't it fun that the drum was already there? I did not bring a drum, it was just there. And that is how we knew that it was, it was, yes. And it was there many of courses throughout the, throughout the weekend that um, are just indicators that the universe has our back. Yeah, it, we felt held and supported that whole time, yes. without a doubt. Yes, and I think that to go back to uh, Robin just commenting that um, she didn't feel exhausted after, because in the past, when you are a, when you are somebody who we will call a helping professional, so think about a psychologist or a therapist or a counselor, um, or even uh, the physicians and so on, but when you are trained to hold space for people, uh, holding space on your own is you can do it, but it takes a lot of effort and it's exhausting because you're relying on your own energetic resources because you're not connected necessarily with your channel. And so it, it is just a very different experience to come out of that feeling full rather than feeling depleted. And that is something that we talk about to your, to go way back to when you said is we may be talking about this during the training, but uh, you know, the energetics of it is the most important thing because if it's the energetics are wobbly, um, the programs will have a harder time filling. And if your energetics are wobbly, the programs will not fill because there's a requirement for the leaders of these uh, spiritual retreats to be light leaders. To have transcended the helper healer paradigm to have transcended the, um, even the, uh, we'll say the psychologist um, kind of medical model paradigm where there's evidence-based practices and empirically supported treatments. And by the way, um, Robin can trace all of the work that she does back to positive psychology in research, of course, and, and some other fields as well, but that's kind of her major field to trace things back to if she is required to, and it's no longer a requirement for her to do that. And it never was, but it was a way of her uh, sort of building a bridge for the things that she um, offers and how she works with people. But um, I think that, that that is the most important thing in, in offering these spiritual retreats at this point is that we have to be fully in our light leadership uh, because that is the, um, what is the word that I would like to use here? It may be uh, the portal. I'm not sure if that is the right word to use, but it is just the, um, the point of entry, we'll, we will say, to hosting these retreats successfully and making the difference that you are meant to be making with them. Mm -hmm. So if you go into your retreat, Elena, wearing your um, school psychologist hat, you will have a different outcome than if you go into the retreat wearing your light leader um, superhero cape. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yes. What other things are occurring to you, sweetheart? I think the other piece that I just wanted to make space for was, um, I think one of the most profound experiences that I had during um, this retreat was the trip to the Wolf Sanctuary. I mean, talk about talk about life changing. Um, it was it was so interesting. Um, we even did some back road driving to get there. Yes, of course, we had to. <laughs> Do some four wheeling. We took my my Audi because uh, you have such a beautiful, sweet new car, and my car is beautiful and sweet as well. But um, I didn't want you to worry about your car. <laughs> oh my gosh! And you drove through the through the creek. Through the creek, yes. When you told me to make a right into a road that did not exist. <laughs> Talk about a point of entry. <laughs> well, yes, it kind of reminded me of um, uh, uh, Back to the Future where he's going into the future and he says roads we there aren't any roads here we don't need any roads and that was a little <laughs> bit like that as well um yeah so yeah so the wolves um one of the the um things that i think that the we'll say the healing professionals or the helping professionals have an advantage in doing these retreats is that we can make meaning out of anything we can create anything have any experience and we can make it into a metaphor for for a transformation and and, and genuinely do so mm -hmm. and so the wolves were the activator for the the um the transformation and so yes yeah, so what did you what do you want to say about your wolf experience 
I mean, I never, I, this was never something that I actively like thought I would seek out. And so I love that it kind of just came to me in a very like receiving kind of way. Um, you know, driving over there, it was, I was surprisingly calm. Um, but then when we got onto the property, um, it was a mixture of excitement and nerves. Like it was definitely the intersection of the two. And, um, the way that the, we went to the Sedona Wolf Sanctuary and the way they structure it is you go into different, um, sections of the property as a group. And I think that really changed the dynamic for me of like, when we went in, you know, they allow you're right in the space with the wolves. There's no like barrier between you. Like you're very much steeped in it. Um, which like how fitting given like what we're talking about, the energetics of the retreat and, so much came up for me in that moment around, well, what if they don't come to me? Because one of the things that they did a great job of describing at the outset was that, you know, obviously wolves are spiritual animals and they can sense energy and they respond to it accordingly. So that kind of sets the framework of like, oh, well, what if my energy is bad? And what if I'm not accepted into the pack? And so there was this, this pressure that was being applied when we went into that first part of the property where I was like, I really want to be received and to be accepted. And um, the one wolf named Thor, who I'm never going to forget, um, came up to me pretty quickly and just kind of was like sizing me up. And I think what I remember in that moment was just, I was like kind of shocked by his sheer size. Like I really was just kind of like taken aback of like, oh my gosh, like there's this giant wolf licking my hand, um, but also then staring directly into my eyes. We made like this beautiful direct eye contact. And I mean, it's still difficult for me to explain even a week out. Like I think I just continuing to like sit in that, but I just felt so deeply connected to that animal in a way that I probably can't connect with most humans. And for me, you know, just sharing in relation to my own journey, you know, I have, as I've become a business owner and, and done this evolution in my own identity, um, the principle of being seen, being fully seen. And I feel like for a lot of people that I work with and a lot of people that I talk to, you know, it is rare for someone to fully see you in modern society. And so, what that really transposed onto me was this wolf, this this beautiful, you know, being was really able within a second to fully see me. I felt fully seen in that moment. And like what a powerful experience that kind of took me back aback a little bit. I was like, wow, I, I can't believe that I'm experiencing this. How wonderful. And then he remembered his friend uh Robin and Marisol and he ran over and gave her some kisses. How awesome was that? Yes, he, he spent quite a bit of time with us, but um, that's, uh, well, it was nice to be remembered, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that when you speak about that, Alina, it is, um, it is a reminder of when we give people the invitation to do something that is outside of anything that they have ever done before, um, it is the invitation to know themselves even more deeply and to really, and to fully be seen. Uh, the, I will call it vulnerability and it is not that really, but um, the willingness I'll say to open up and to uh, be in the uncertainty mm -hmm. where anything is possible. That was the field of possibility that you were in. You were not in problem mode, but you did meet your shadow and your shadow was the part of you who was, oh, I want to be liked and I have to perform and I want to get an A plus in wolf meeting activities, right? Um, not that you would have labeled it like that, but that was really what it was. And uh, then you were able to shed that mm. and put that put that part of yourself away, the, the part who feels performative or feels like she has to prove something or whatever, and just to be, just to be with mm. the wolves. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that everybody has to do a wolf experience as part of a spiritual retreat either hosting or participating in one, but it, they are um, some of our greatest teachers. The wolves and the horses, of course, are two of my favorites. And 
I don't know if we could do a Buffalo experience. That might be something to look into at some point. <laughs> oh, and I've always wanted, I have to tell you, I have always wanted, um, from the time I was a little girl, I loved the bees. And uh, my stepfather, who has passed away several years ago, was a beekeeper. Um, but I've always wanted to get in a bee suit and be with and be with the bees. So I think that this could be a fun experience at some point as well. So the thing that I love about doing these retreats is that I get to um, enjoy all the things that I love. And so uh, be long before when I was doing these retreats, this would have been before the pandemic, I was doing a lot of equine work because I love the horses and horses are transformative in a different way. And so when we're looking at creating uh, experiences, not just for your clients, but also for you, we would want to look at uh, what are the things that you love the most? Mm -hmm. What have been your most transformative experiences? Maybe it's the wolves or uh, the reason that I brought people to horses is because in one of my early retreats at Miraval Spa in uh, Tucson, when I was mm, probably, I was early in grad school, it might, I might have been like 32 or so, I had a life-changing experience with a horse named Annie. And that was it for me. That was like, okay, I'm, this is, these are my people. And they weren't even people, they were horses. What, what, any last questions or thinking about the retreat that you would like to bring forward or questions for me, of course? Yeah, no, just feelings of gratitude to be included. And I think that, you know, as someone, again, who had no former knowledge or experience, it was just such a beautiful opportunity to not only receive, you know, in being in that, in that container and in that environment, but also to really play in the creative possibilities of holding that for myself. And so maybe my last question would be around, you know, let's say you're resonating with some of the mes messaging that's coming through on this episode and you want to know um, where to begin, where to start. You know, I think that's one of the hardest uh, steps for people in general is like taking that first step of like, I want to do this, but you know, do I look at a property where, like, what would mm -hmm. you recommend as a first starting point? Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting. Robin would have something else to say about this, but I will just go right to it. Uh, to go to a retreat yourself. Invest in yourself and go to a retreat. And this is how actually Robin began. And you are beginning as well. In the initiation to hosting spiritual retreats, go on one yourself. Go on one with uh, a guide who you know, like, and trust, and who is living the life that you admire. Uh, and who you know you're meant to be working with or learning from, because uh, that is very activating. There are some, there's medicine in the retreat that you go to yourself that will carry you forward. Um, the retreats that Robin went on when she was uh, first starting uh, were sometimes five-day retreats in Hawaii. And you can bet there, those were big transformations. The first time she went, oh my goodness, she, I think the retreat itself cost $3,000 and then she had to fly herself to Hawaii from Kansas and her hotel. And she was, she was still, um, you know, she had just, she didn't even know the terms wealth consciousness yet. And she was working in the pharmaceutical industry and, but she knew, she knew that she had to be there and, uh, she had a lot of stuff come up at that point. So there is an evolution, isn't there? As you, um, expose yourself or, um, Yes, expose yourself to the retreat, the energetics of the retreat. And she came back changed every time she would go on a retreat and inspired to um, begin hosting her own retreats. I, there is, um, it's a little bit like a, an apprenticeship, isn't it? Because uh, when you're watching somebody who is masterful at doing a thing, you pick up on not to um, emulate them, I'm not saying that, but you pick up on the uh, the energetics of it and it's something is activated in you to, to express for yourself. So that is a place to start. And then the other uh, place to start, there are a couple of angles, but the other place to start, of course, is uh, along with the experience, getting the kind of the information about all of the um, the details, because the as much as we would like to um, send the the intellect, you know, on permanent holiday to some beach to drink Mai Tais all day long or play Mahjong or whatever the intellect wants to do, um, we still require some 3D structure and, or a blueprint, if you will. And so the blueprint is what we're going to be talking about um, in the, uh, the Intuitive Channel Six Figure Secrets. And that is going to be just such a delightful 
experience for me to be able to share the the blueprints for these these retreats. Mm, I love that. Receive mm -hmm. first, then receive all will come. First. Yes, because the activations come through receiving. Mm. If you are in um, taking energy or have to energy, these, these are the, you can do them. I'm sure that people um, who are not channels, we know this, the people who are not channels do offer retreats and they probably have some success with those. But uh, if you are drawn into this work, it is uh, about activating your intuitive channel and allowing the intuitive channel to take center stage really uh to do the uh to do the big work and uh your human gets to be along for the ride and then the other thing i would say is if you can if you can swing it is to have somebody like elena come with you who can be your left brain to have a retreat organizer we didn't have any problems. You know, some people might say, well, you know, it's a private retreat. How did you navigate that with having an assistant there? We'll call you an assistant. That's not what you were, but that's like the kind of the, you did assist very much, uh, but it was so much more than that. Um, and it was such a seamless integration, wasn't it? In fact, at one point, I, I did have some private work to do with my client. And um, I, I turned to Elena and I said, we will return to you. Um, and then afterwards, I was like, oh, well, it just seemed like obvious that she would come as well. So it was, you know, navigating those human things, but also having a uh, having you there as a psychologically mature person who knows her boundaries and can hold space was the most important thing. Yeah. Was this helpful? Yeah, it was, it was truly a gift to be part of that. Well, I would love for you to tell people where they can find you online because you've got your own magical business. And um, you're also doing uh, Neo profiles for intuitives as well. That is another thing that we have in common, of course. Um, so where can people find you? Yeah. So the name of my business is Flow State Coaching and Consulting. You can find me um, on every, all those social media platforms at Flow State AZ. And then um, that is also my website as well. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, as uh, Robin and Marisol mentioned, you know, school psychology is my background and um, I definitely am interested in working with these, with these little ones that are coming up in this new earth energy, but also very excited to be making a huge uh, shift in my business around, um, doing some executive coaching, um, also with spiritual entrepreneurs, women in particular, high achievers who want to break out of the nine to five paradigm, um, and come join us on retreats and be able to play in the infinite possibilities. So I'm launching that container uh, just this week I did. So if oh, you're yes. interested, feel free to reach out to me. I'm I'm very excited to be able to um, continue to offer this work in a, in a really transformative way. Yes. Well, you have such a gift of bridging um, the, the, uh, what do I want to call it? The normal world with the supernatural and um, it's such a gift. So Thank you. Uh, Elena, you're going to be on another podcast soon as well with me, but for now we're going to say goodbye and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you for having me. Pleasure you're to be welcome. here.